The Square Ball Podcast. Welcome to the show brought to you with Levi Solicitors. There is a 10% discount on your legal fees at levisolicitors.co.uk forward slash the square ball. Great bunch of lads. Very much so. Great bunch of lads. Doing and fine lasses. work. Yeah, they are doing very, very fine work. Um, so see them if you need. If you've got legal issues that need resolving, 10% off your legal fees. Go see Levi's. Uh, Dan Moylan with you, along with Michael Normanton and Rob Conlon today, as well on the Square Ball Weekly Show. And the football's back. Yay. It is. Thank sort God. of. Thank God. Um, we will get into previewing Villa in due course. First, a quick reminder of uh, TSB Plus. Our membership package, um, priority access to the match ball after a game, which returns this week after Villa. That'd be nice, won't it? It will. I've been thoroughly bored yeah. <laughs> with, the, with all these games cancelled. And the other like England games, not really. I'm going to say England, not yeah. City Pulses Racing, Gareth Southgate's England. God. All the excitement. It's weird because 3 3 looks on paper like a really exciting game, but everyone was just saying how terrible it was. So I watched it. Yeah, well, I saw the I saw the actual I saw the good bit, the good twenty minutes mm-hmm. that we had. Um, just should say the squareball.net forward slash plus just to close out that thought. Oh yeah, do that. We we segued straight into slagging off um, Southgate <laughs> England, uh, who got us to a major uh, <laughs> tournament final for the first time. But he's now he's got us relegated that's from true. a competition I care about dearly. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, England are weird, aren't they? I, I've, I was saying before, like in the run up when the squads were announced. Now we don't have Phillips to be emotionally invested in. <sighs> a point mm. it was weird on um friday night when they played italy i was only really half watching it i had it on the laptop while i was watching actually something entertaining on the tv but it says a lot about what england games are like in that the sort of half of it what i saw i was like, it's like yeah it's no it's no different really to mm-hmm. what I'm, and then everyone was absolutely losing their shit about it but i thought this is just what England games are like, aren't they? They're always like this. Well, the Nations League to begin with, it felt like it was a slightly more competitive version of the really shit friendlies England used to play. That was that was, that was the reason they invented it, wasn't it? But to now avoid we, those. But now we seem to be treating them like really shit friendlies that we'll sometimes well, just lose. Which you have to, because nobody gives a shit in the same way they do about the domestic leagues. And of course, the World Cup adds another curveball into all that this year, doesn't it? So, mm-hmm. At least that's going to be a huge success. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? I'm, I'm, this is the least I've ever looked forward to a World Cup. Like, I remember being a kid getting towards the World Cups and you think, all right, the season's finished now, a few more weeks, but it's all kind of, it's the foreplay for the World Cup at that point, isn't it? When, mm-hmm. the, when the season ends and you're just in that that waiting for the tournament to start bit. And I've got no anticipation for this at all. It's, well, it's really not been helped by this month of no Leeds games either yeah. because I'm just resenting this World Cup mm-hmm. even more. That I think, well, I've had to wait a month for Leeds to play. We're going to play for another month and then it's another month off. Like, I don't want that. Just play Leeds games instead. <laughs> I think the anticipation as well of a summer of knowing you're going to be, it's going to be summertime, you're going to be off school for some of it, you're going to have loads of football. You still on go to stuff. school? Hang on the schools? But that like that feeling you get of World Cups though. <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> Whereas this, rubbish. Yeah, it's silly, isn't it? Well, we've never had it, have we? That's the point. We've never had it where it's, it's broken into the season before. Um, speaking of which... Let's y- boycott it. We should have done that ages ago, to be perfectly honest. But yeah, mind you, you know, if, if England progress again, suddenly you'll start buying into it again and thinking, oh, maybe I do care. Oh, it's coming home and all that shit. Whatever. <laughs> uh, I was going to say um, Saudi Arabia time. Um, sorry, the USA playing Saudi Arabia at 7 p.m. UK time. That's tonight, isn't it? Tuesday night as we um, as we record this. It's nice to actually have, have some emotional investment in, in other internationals as well, like just to see how our uh, our Yankee boys get on. Yeah, looking forward to that. Although they got um, kicked about and beaten by Japan, didn't they? That was mental. That tackle on Aronson. <laughs> that it, it didn't even get checked by VAR, did it? But he just sort of rakes his studs down the back of his leg. It was. It like... started at knee height, didn't it? Like the top of his calf, and he mm. just went right down the back of his leg. Which, as far as I'm concerned, that's probably a foul. Yes, correct. I think. Um, <laughs> Would you have given that? <laughs> it's wild. That's the thing with Leeds playing at the end of this week. I'm now looking at the internationals going, oh God, just get through them. Just leave them out. Like Mateus Click was not even on the bench for Poland. I thought, good, yes. need more of that. Mind you, then you've got, um, who is it? Uh, our new boy, Nonto, has been featuring for Italy. He started versus Hungary, was heavily involved, uh, went off with a bit of a knock. You know, oh great, here we go again. At one point he looked really injured because ahead of watching the England game, I actually did watch this, or at least the first half and a bit of it because I was... Um, Putting kids to bed and, and stuff. Uh, my kids, to be clear, just to give you, um, mm-hmm. you, just accuse me of lurking around school still. I didn't accuse I think you. Those, those are your words, Michael. <laughs> um, See, so yeah, I was watching that ahead of watching England because I thought, I actually want to see what, if he's any good. And um, he looks fairly useful. He's, yeah. He gives the ball away quite a bit. And it was a, you can tell he's not exactly the finished article, but he's 
he's kind of interesting. He's exciting, and mm. in, in the stuff he did for closing down for uh, well, it was a it was latching onto a, a shot. Back pass wasn't it? Yeah, which I imagine is something he gets to do all the time in training <laughs> <laughs> at Leeds um, with uh, with old Diego <laughs> laying him back ten yards short of Melia. Um, but no, I thought I thought it was quite he was quite decent in it. He looks lively. He's got smashing thighs as well. They've got your boa esque thighs for those of us who were mm. knocking around in the mid nineties. Um, your boa noted for having um, an excellent quality of thigh. Mm. And the ears of a newborn. <laughs> I was going to say, and fantastic ears. <laughs> I've, I've been a bit, that was the thing on Friday when he came on against England. That was sort of the moment when I actually looked up and started paying attention and saw him kick Jack Grealish, which was good. And I thought, oh, he's going to fit right in at Leeds. But yeah, he, he didn't. He sort of got a little bit involved. Um, it was Gazetta Della Sport praised him for his swirling legs, which I thought was a good description. <laughs> And he did that nice thing where he, uh, he coincided the two players as well, didn't he? Um, and looked lively. Have we underestimated him a bit? Well, I feel like the club have talked him down, really, by, <laughs> yeah. by not paying all that much for him, which is good. I'm not saying we should have paid more, but that... The combination you should have gone of, full, full Riddell and demanded we pay 20 million. The combination of the low fee and Jesse saying he wasn't ready for the Premier League. But, like, he looks all right. In, well, he looks all right in international football, which is a hell of a step up. You see when people go from under-23s to the first team, what a difference it is. And he's already playing at a, a level above that. So, Well, when we were chatting about this on the Phil Hay show, like back end of last week, the thought occurred to me after we'd finished the show that if this was, if you transplanted it to your own nation, and, you know, in our case, this is England, if it was an 18 year old who was on the fringes of the England squad as an attacker and we were signing him, you'd be well excited, wouldn't you? Yeah, massively so. But it's just because we're not that aware of his presence, you know, in Europe and. Italy, I know it's, Italy are in a bit of a weird spot insofar as they've not qualified for the World Cup and they they are doing this thing of trying to play mm. more youngsters and stuff so they, they're kind of getting ready for almost for the next stage so maybe if they were to be playing in the World Cup they wouldn't be playing him now but you know he's, he's good enough to be around that squad it seems and they obviously rate him highly enough and have, having had several looks at him they still want him in the squad because you do occasionally get that thing of at England level where someone will get called at once and they obviously sort of take a look at him and go yeah nah I think not, um, not that. I think that's the thing. I, I was a little bit cynical of the whole oh, he's an Italy international thing be- when we signed him because, yeah, Mancini's used something like 80 players mm. over four years. He's cast the net very, very far and wide and anyone with a bit of talent and potential has got a chance. I mean, he's even called up Marco Silvestri at one point, although he <laughs> didn't play, which is uh, telling uh, and the right decision, I imagine. Mm. But um, that's the thing with Nonto, the fact that they've had a look at him and keep using him now like the fact that they're bringing him on against England they're starting him against Hungary um, he's obviously got a lot of potential that they like I think there is I think maybe I don't know if this is sort of Premier League arrogance but I think there probably is an argument that that level is a step up above mm-hmm. international level because it's very slow and quite turgid a lot of the games and someone like Rasmus Christensen who has played in the Champions League played internationally for Denmark um, played 90 minutes the other night as they beat France um, he's had to say, yeah, this is actually, he's been surprised by the step up mm-hmm. of the Premier League. So maybe that's where the message from Leeds is coming that, yeah, he's, maybe we shouldn't expect too much from Nonto. But it looks really promising. Yeah, and he's a, he's a better option off the bench, not to be doing anyone down, but like last season when we were bringing on people like McKinstry and people who we've since let leave the club or go out on loan, it seems like he's more likely to affect a game than, than, than those people. So, and he, he actually was playing. I was interested to see where he played yesterday and he was playing properly up front. He did drift wide, but he seemed to be actually as as a proper striker, which I think given the size of him, you almost expect that he's going to be a wide player because you think, well, you can't put him down the middle. But I suppose you can as long as you just don't pump balls to his head, mm. which we will inevitably do, <laughs> which is the frustration of everyone. Like, he's, he's four foot, for Christ's sake. And Luis Sinistera scored his first goal for uh, for Colombia against Guatemala. Uh, he was on the second half sub, wasn't he, there? And sc- took him 12 minutes to score the 1-4-1. That's his first goal for Colombia. Moscow's written a good blog about how his finishing makes Moscow feel safe, which I think uh, yeah, is very applicable, especially when you see... Uh, Sinistera's teammate who has the shot at the cutback first and completely shins it <laughs> or even misses the ball and then Sinistera just puts it into the top corner as if it's the easiest thing in the world. Officially our best player now as well, Sinistera, because um, the new FIFA 23 has come out today. So those are people who play on consoles and one, one of the things the kids are always into is like what score has each of the players got. He's got 80 as um, a Sinistera, the highest scoring player in the Leeds squad. Mm. I was a little bit disappointed though. Brendan Aronson's only got 74 I feel like, and the rest of the squad's about 77, 76. But Aronson's gone up a couple of points from his his performance last year. Anyone been downgraded 
significantly. Uh, not that I can tell. They're all about mid to high 70s in the Leeds squad. And Leeds is, is classed as a four-star club out of five. That's just reminded me of um, when they got Ian Pervader mm-hmm. to do the unveilings a couple of years back. <laughs> and he was looking at everyone's stats, which were really good. And he looked at his own. And like, oh, I thought I might be a bit bad. Barry this. Douglas was comforting him, wasn't he? He like, you'll get there. You'll get there. Don't you worry about it. Yeah, so I think JB is one of our, our lowest scoring players. He's like in the high 50s, something like that. But um, he's obviously just on the on the fringes of breaking through. Um, speaking of which, Sonny Perkins, he scored a, a hatful for the England under-19s against Georgia. 6-0 win, wasn't it? It was. First half hat-trick. He seems to just score every time he plays, doesn't he? He's quietly very, very promising, isn't he? I mean, I think I don't think we've discovered him. I think West Ham knew he was good. Yeah. And then we um, definitely didn't steal him. He, he just he just chose he wanted to live in he wanted to live in York. He happened to become available and attracted to the area. That's what happened. Yes, yeah. but good. I'm all for poaching youngsters when it's not ours being poached. Mm. And he's never gonna not score again now. <laughs> <laughs> it's how it looks. If we can play him against um, against Villa, I think he's he's nailed on for goals. It is interesting how we start to accommodate these people though, because some of Villa always looks really good in the under 23s, as does Perkins, and then we've got Nonto who's. Well, we don't really know at the moment if he's first team or under twenty threes, but there's there's suddenly quite a lot of decent looking game changing players that could be on the bench. Matteo Joseph was talking mm-hmm. recently about how he rejected Barcelona to come play for us because he was so impressed by well, Victor Alta's presentation. Come to a big money club, hasn't he? There, <laughs> not one of those skint arseholes in uh, in Spain. Yeah, what was in the presentation? Did he show him the video of uh, from the documentary about the crowd and stuff? Because that's that, apparently that's one the of his, one, isn't it? Yeah, one of his, one of his go to favourites. Uh, another young lad we've signed, Cole Brannigan. 16-year-old kid from uh, from Northern Ireland. Midfielder, is this right? Not got him yet. We're maybe getting him. Right. I don't think it's confirmed or anything. We There's us and loads of other clubs wanting him. I made the assumption because his name's on the sheet. No, so. it's just the only transfer news there is. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, apart from being linked with... Who was it? Some other, one of the, who were we always linked with? I saw I saw some, some link had re-emerged. Ryan Kent. With, it wasn't, it it's wasn't, not wasn't, Gakpo, is it either? Because um, he's... Good now. Yeah, I think Gakpo's... Too good. Well, I think he, he, him and Click, best of friends now, is what I'm claiming as well. Did you see there's actually... Uh, they were on the pitch together for a 20 bit, minutes. For 20 minutes. So I think he's Click's probably had a word. If there, like, is any, if there is anybody who's going to have a word with him, it would be Click. <laughs> it's like, just come on. But we linked, we linked with um, Pulisic this morning as well for a £31 million pound move, something like that, in uh, in January in the window. Would you would you take Pulisic? So, yes, is that for our twenty threes or twenty ones? It'll, it'll be in the it'll be in the perennium zone somewhere yeah. between the two. I think um, much like all the other ones that we've been signing. Because I now follow some several US men's national team Twitter accounts, they basically all there's like a free Pulisic campaign going, aren't they? And it's like they always make a joke about oh, he's the massive scapegoat and everything at Chelsea, which is weird because I feel like in England he, he feels quite under the radar to me. Mm. Like he sometimes comes on, but he doesn't particularly draw anyone's emotions one way or another it's just he's just someone who exists but I guess that's in in the same way that we were all massively emotionally attached to Calvin and you kind of you sort of hyper analysed his performance for England and got very defensive when people were saying he didn't mm. really contribute I guess it's the same sort of thing isn't it when it's your boy you kind of you're going to back him to the hilt yeah I guess so I mean he is considered to be like the best American player ever yeah. more, more or less well, he's, he's, old, he's old news now he's he's the the young well, he was the poster boy wasn't he and we've now got pretenders to the crown mm. but if we reunite them all under one roof, um, that'd be exciting for both of the American fans anyway. Yeah, I, I, he's obviously a good player and he wouldn't be the first person to go to Chelsea and fuck up his career. I didn't realise it's a dreadful club. Just earn loads of money, but, you know. But em- empty your soul. Exactly. Who needs that? Nobody. Come um, to Leeds, we'll pay you £15,000 a week. <laughs> <laughs> just to close out the thought on uh, on Cole Brandigan, he's managed by David Healy then at, um, at Linfield, as like Charlie Allen was as well. Mm. Um, Man City, Chelsea and Liverpool, all interested apparently. Don't, <laughs> don't go to any of those. You're not going to play there, right. Come to Leeds. Yeah, exactly. We've got, we've got Stuart Dallas and we've got Charlie Allen. What more, <laughs> what more could you want as a Northern Irishman? And Jet 2 still there. They must fly to Belfast from Leeds Bradford, must not they? <laughs> we've got uh, Bailey Peacock Farrell. Mm. Who played for us? Died in the wall, Ulsterman, for, <laughs> yeah. for a little time. Yeah, I don't know which bit of Northern Ireland he's from. Isn't the bit the bit near York? Nigel Worthington as well for nineties Leeds yeah. fans, a big Leeds United favourite. Yeah. Okay, let's not mention Nigel. Um, on to Bielsa news. Doesn't look like he's going to to Santos though. Who's reported to have turned down that job. Um, that's a nice. It's a safe job, is that? Isn't it? Somewhere over there. What, so we don't have to get upset? Yeah, don't... Mm. I like this part of me thinks, God, this turgid football that England play. Imagine Bielsa in charge of England. I could probably like him again because it's Bielsa and it being, you know, casting his image and all that kind of thing. But 
the country would the, the press would ruin him, wouldn't they? Like yeah, the first goal we concede, everyone would be on his back. Whereas I don't know, Southgate seems to largely get away with it. I would love an England manager that refuses to speak English just to see the reaction <laughs> of Matt Law <laughs> and Neil Custis and all them. Uh, um, the women sticking to the uh, traditions of the club then. Yep, straight out of the cup. Great. Excellent. Early exit, well done. Lost 2-0 to York. Um, should have gone in at least the goal ahead. Yeah, Did, they didn't. They battered them in the first half. And they hit the crossbar. York's keeper made a few good saves from one-on-ones. And then 0-0 at half time. I think Rick Passmore, the manager, even sort of said afterwards, well, you know what's going to happen then, don't you? <laughs> don't tell them that. <laughs> stop the, why don't you stop that happening? Yeah. Out of the cup, so now what do we do? Concentrating on the Concentrating league. Concentrating on the league. Um, Although there's loads of cups. Right. They're in. Oh, there's like plates and shields and stuff as well. Yeah, this might even be the one where there's one where you lose, you go out of one cup and if you lose, then you go into another cup. So it's a bit like the Champions League when you get booted into the Europa League yeah. and all that jazz. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There seems to be endless cups in, right, that, right. in their league. Uh, we have new rules on banning as well in the Premier League. The shareholders meeting, which is basically the clubs and, uh, and the FA, isn't it? All got together and said children who run on the pitch should be jailed and flogged. <laughs> I think so. I, I would go one step further and anyone caught bringing a sign into a game. I would have them put in the cells. We, so we're banning children bringing signs in. Uh, if an adult is caught bringing a sign in, they, they should have a shoe in in the car park. Yeah. <laughs> off CCTV or on? Absolutely off. Right. Um, yeah, that, that should really be clamped down upon. But I, I know I know it's nice as a kid to get a shirt and what have you, but it is kind of annoying. And <laughs> <laughs> Am I out of order here? Or do I find it... I, I don't like the, the little... Clamour of grasping bastards down in, down bet, in corners as, as players roll around, everyone with a little sign. I, I bet when you walk down Pontefract High Street, when they come up to you, you know, the um, the chuggers, like for the charities, mm. with the clipboard. I thought you were going to ask people, are people asking for my shirt? I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> are you, are you, and they're coming to you saying, Mr. Normanton, um, have you thought about saving the whale today? And you just go, I like whales, but I can fuck off if well, you think those, you're having my money. Yeah, no, one wants, no one likes those people, though, do they? No. Let's face it. Do a lot of fine work for charity, as you well know, Dan. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, well mate. Know. I do. As I, you I, well I, know. I was there on the front of the coal face, <laughs> right there with you. So the whales can frankly fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, running on pitches, that is the thing that's been specifically outlawed, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. As and, well um, as um, smoke bombs, other stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think you you mainly got a ban for these things anyway, but I think they've, they've now got a minimum one year attached to them. We should make the kids earn the shirt. They should have to sit and watch... Every game played under Neil Warnock, mm. and then give him David Norris's shirt and say there, be <laughs> yeah. grateful for that. What a shirt, do you? <laughs> yeah. Have you heard of Luke Varney? Well, there you go. And just wrapping things up in this section, by the way, um, Leeds United Bay Area are meeting at Levi Stadium in Santa Clara, home of the San Francisco 49ers. Have you heard of those lot? Yes, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. great bunch oh, of lads. Own a bit of us, don't they? Mm-hmm. Don't put any money in. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, they're having a, a Q&A with Parag Marate at half time. Ask him why he's not putting more money in. <laughs> well, it sounds like the, the manoeuvre in any way to, uh, yeah. to hopefully to take over and, uh, and we'll see what that what that brings. Um, but yeah, it'd be interesting to hear what, what is said at the, uh, at the Q&A. Because I found out that when we spoke to uh, Parag on uh, the Phil Hay show when Phil was off having his head drilled into, Parag is a dead nice guy, but he's, he's very, very skilled at corporate answers, I found. mm he needs more of the Angus Kinnear about him. <laughs> letting, some, <laughs> letting some shit slip. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, the Bay Area meeting at Levi's Stadium, uh, home of the 49ers. That's for the Villa, Villa game, by the way. Oh, we're not going then? No, no, no. It's, nah. um, yeah, so they're watching the Villa game there. Little get-together, hands across the ocean, all that sort of stuff. So, nice. um, yeah. and, if you, and if you are an American, please subscribe. Cause oh, the doll- it, I was going to say... It's more or less free for you now. Great time to subscribe if you are, uh, if you are American, because the state of the pound against the dollar exactly. is it's, fucked, isn't it? It's probably less than like a coffee now. Or something is TSB plus here. Yeah, so if you could, I'll just send cash, <laughs> stockings. Um, enough, what other, what, about your kinks, what other wartime stuff did people need? <laughs> it was bananas, coffee, coffee. Yeah, yeah. We'll, have, we'll have some of that too. So anything, jam, anything you can send us, and all that stuff. Uh, anyway. Ameri- American trousers. Get yeah. the old Levi's over, please. Great stuff. And um, there you go. That wraps up this part of it. Then we will preview Villa in part two. Then so stick around. The Square Ball Podcast. 